Hello, you've caught me just browsing my phone, you know, as you do. Hmm, we can guess your age based on this anger management test. Oh, bookmark that for later. Local woman makes £7,000 a month from home. Wow, that's amazing. We react to the latest death in Game of Thrones. Ah! Oh, damn it! Flipping spoilers. The internet is crawling with them. Flashing, show-ruining screenshots at you with all the discretion of a house party full of elephants. So much so that when you're midway through a season of one of your favourite shows, you know, Game of Thrones, The Walking Dead, Peppa Pig, you pretty much have to go on social media lockdown to avoid them all. It's the same with games as well, especially when a long-awaited AAA blockbuster comes out. A sensible thing to do is avoid all media coverage altogether, apart from PlayStation Access videos, obviously, we haven't spoiled anything for days. But sometimes, no matter how careful you are, no matter if you delete the Twitter app on your phone or avoid all social interaction for weeks on end, Sometimes, the spoilers get you anyway. Here are seven ridiculous ways we've had games spoiled for us. Spoilers! This video will contain spoilers. For Metal Gear Solid, Final Fantasy XV, Uncharted 4, Red Dead Redemption, and Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons. But first of all, for Heavy Rain. That's right, if you've not finished Heavy Rain yet, then proceed with caution, is what a certain games magazine, which I won't name, did not print before splashing the main twist all over a double page spread literally the month after it came out. I still hadn't bought the game, I was waiting until payday, all excited, ready to treat myself to one of the most important games in years, and so to get myself all nice and hyped, I bought a copy of a you know, magazine. There was a nice feature on Heavy Rain, and the screenshots looked amazing, and so I crossed off another day on my calendar, pumped for when I could finally place my order. And then, as I read further through the mag one lunchtime, I came across a list feature on video games serial killers, you know, one of those fun little articles to break up the previews and reviews, and listed under serial killers was none other than, here comes the spoiler by the way, ready? I'm about to say the big spoiler, you've been warned, just like I wasn't. Listed under serial killers was Scott Shelby, the origami killer, Heavy Rain. Are you serious? Are you honestly serious? <laughs> magazine. Just after the game has come out, a game that above all else prioritises story and character. Unbelievable. And so yeah, the first time I played Heavy Rain, I did so knowing all the time I was controlling Scott Shelby that he was the killer. Which sucked, obviously. Our second entry is when I had a major twist in Metal Gear Solid spoiled for me by my idiot friend at school. Something I have since forgiven him for, seeing as how this is the same friend who introduced me to Final Fantasy. But anyway, so I was playing through Metal Gear Solid for the first time. I was about 12 years old and my PlayStation was at my dad's house, so I only got to play it when I visited him on Sundays. To help me get through the week, I used to take the manual home with me. For any viewers under the age of 16, a manual is something you used to get inside game boxes that gave you an introduction to the game, told you about the characters, explained the controls, that kind of thing. And they smelled really nice as well. The Metal Gear Solid manual was amazing. It had a comic strip of Snake in various situations which acted as a tutorial. And I used to pore over this at recess and at lunchtime and bedtime, counting down the days until I could play the game again. In the front of the manual, it also had a bunch of character bios, which I must have read about 50 times. And so one lunchtime I was reading these character bios and my mate strolls up to me, turkey burger in his hand, nothing in his brain. He points to the picture of Master Miller and he goes, Ah, oh, that is Liquid Snake actually. What? That's Liquid Snake in disguise. Ah, oh, thanks. Thanks for letting me know, you idiot. And that was the worst thing. He hadn't spoiled it out of spite. He'd spoiled it because he was an idiot child who just wanted to show off his knowledge of the end game because he'd already finished it and wanted to let everyone know. You know, he was the type of kid who'd hijack a conversation between two people talking about Star Wars by saying, hey, hey, wait until you watch the second one and find out, Star Wars spoilers, Darth Vader is Luke's dad. It's great, it's so good, it's such a shocking twist. 
Oh. Our next entry is when I had a major plot point in Final Fantasy XV spoiled for me in the comments of one of my own videos about Final Fantasy XV. Seriously! So, Final Fantasy XV wasn't even out yet, I don't think, and I'd been lucky enough to play it a week or so early to make some videos. I was about 10 hours into the game at the time, which is nothing. I was still dicking about doing side quests in the first couple of areas. At the start of my video, I even said this. I just want to say there are going to be no story spoilers whatsoever. How foolish of me to think I could actually avoid them. Literally not 20 minutes after this video was published, some thoughtful person in the comments decided to blurt out a major plot point from about halfway through the game. Just bang! Right there. Clear as day. A deliberate, malicious attempt to ruin a game lots of people had been waiting the best part of a decade for. I deleted the comment to stop others from seeing it, but the damage had been done. Nathan pointed out it might have been a fake spoiler, but... It wasn't. And even if it had been, that doesn't really matter. It's still something that's going to alter your expectations as you play. It's going to play on your mind. You can't just sit back and enjoy the story anymore because you're constantly thinking to yourself, hmm, that thing that person said might happen. Don't spoil things in the comments, guys. Not cool. Next up, we've got the hilarious time Uncharted 4 came out and I decided to download the official dynamic theme for my PS4 because why not? I like to decorate my home screen with art from whatever I'm currently playing. Minor Uncharted 4 spoilers incoming. So I install it, all excited to see whether or not my icons now make a cool Uncharted sound when I select them. They do, excellent, and then, oh, oh, this is a nice looking theme, is that... Is that Drake sitting in sitting in a pile of treasure? Avery's treasure, I assume. The MacGuffin everyone in Uncharted 4 is after, the location of which no one knows. Because it looks like he's on a ship. And it looks like the ship is on fire. Well, I guess Avery's treasure is hidden on a pirate ship then. And I guess that pirate ship then gets set on fire. Drake's wasting his time with all these maps and clues, isn't he? Just download the Uncharted 4 Dynamic Theme, mate. It will lead you right there. Cool. Thanks, Dynamic Theme. Entry number five. Now, we all know someone like this, don't we? Anyone coming for a drink? No. I wasn't asking you. Wheels? I can't. I'm hitting the gym. Jesus. Nath, are you coming out? I don't want it to just be me. Why not? Why, who else is going to be there? Jimmy Spoiler. Jimmy Spoiler. <laughs> So, uh, you played the old uh, Red Dead Redemption yet, Dave? Uh, no, not yet, but I'm, I'm going to, I'm definitely going to, so don't, just don't tell me anything about it. Of course, of course mate, of course. Like literally nothing, like not even something you don't think is a spoiler, not even like a clever way of avoiding a spoiler, just literally tell me nothing about Red Dead Redemption. Worry not mate, not to worry, not to worry. It's proper shocking when Marston dies at the end, though, mate. You should see oh! it. In our next entry, Dave falls victim to another horrible spoiler dealer. Me. That's right. One Friday afternoon, Dave was watching one of these list videos because he'd run out of both things to label and write on the whiteboard, and he got something spoiled for him. To be fair, the video was called Seven Times Games Didn't End Happily Ever After, so really, he's only got himself to blame. When it got to the entry on Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons, I even said there'd be spoilers, but Dave was obviously not paying any attention because he kept on watching, and uh-oh, there's the end of the game, Dave. Stop watching, you can still save yourself. No? Well, they are good, these videos, aren't they? Our final entry is something you'll only experience if you're lucky enough to cover video games for a living and is one of the few drawbacks of the job. When you get sent a copy of a game to cover, sometimes they come with a helpful guide in lieu of a manual because, you know, online help isn't available yet, the game isn't out. And sometimes they come with notes on what bits of the game to not show people 
because that would spoil it for them. And naturally the notes contain explicit details of what you're not allowed to talk about. So really, we're all heroes, sacrificing ourselves so you can enjoy your game spoiler free. Dear PlayStation Access, please find and close your copy of Shoot the Cool Gun 8. Please be aware fans have been eagerly anticipating this game for some time and so we kindly ask you refrain from mentioning that Johnny Very Good betrays and kills Pablo and Weebien at the end of chapter 14. Ah, oh, come on! Make the cool game productions. I've been eagerly anticipating this game for ages too. What's happened? These review notes from Make the Cool Game about Shoot the Cool Gun A. What about them? Well, they've just out and said that Johnny Very Good kills Pablo and we BN in chapter 14. Oh! And there are seven ridiculous ways we've had games spoiled for us. Let us know your own tales of spoiler woe in the comments. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Watch another by hitting one of the links on screen. And please join us again next week for another Friday feature. Thanks for watching. <laughs>